So, I started playing this game called Don't Start Together. It is pretty fun, hard, and despite the title, starving to death is ironically the least worrying threat in this world. Speaking of which, I quickly realized that I can't stand cooking in this game. Either I miraculously turn Mini to cook, make a useless meal that literally is a waste of resources, or realize that I have been staring at a pot for so long that two seasons have passed in the meantime. Even using mods is no help to me. This is why instead of getting better at it and improve my cooking skills, I decided to stop eating entirely. In this tutorial, you will learn how to refuse to follow the main game directive and survive in the process by using a strategy that is definitely 100% certified, not time consuming and 10 times way more reliable than eating food. Alright, here we go. First of all, start off with a fresh world. Then, pick the best character in the game. It is theoretically possible to do it with every character, but using Wanda is way easier because she can craft her revival watch and you have no penalty upon being revived by players. So if you play with friends, you can't just cast them to revive you using a Telltale Heart so they can get a free sanity boost. Also, for some reasons, Wanda has a bigger belly than most survivors, so technically it means you survive a little longer, which is always appreciated. Your main objective is to get to the underground blue mushroom biome as soon as possible. There are multiple strategies for this type of challenge. You can either prepare carefully on a surface, like finding tree guards and skeletons of survivors to make the watch, using touchstones or digging up life's giving amulet from graveyards, or use the other strategy consisting in just grabbing 20 twigs and grasses then heading straight for the underground mushroom blue biome where all the ingredients to make multiple watches are and ironically even though the prepare carefully in the overworld part of the strategy will seem safer at first it has a lot of rng to it and most of the times finding all the ingredients you need will take you way more time than 3.5 days if you are unlucky with the directions you have chosen while roaming around or just all around. So that's why I find the best solution is to mix these two strategies together. So here's the step-by-step -step recipe to become immortal. Enjoy! First, pick up at least 20 twigs and grasses so you can make torches to lead your way into the dark and, and lead the cooking pot. Explore the overworld by following the road during the first day. If you want, you have the time to make yourself a science machine, a little backpack, a spear and a shovel just in case while waiting for the water to boil. If you don't find anything of interest that can extend your life by the end of day one, grab your pot and jump straight into the nearest sinkhole. Don't forget to shake it while falling down. While walking around, preferably take out your torches only when you are about to get hit by Charlie. Remember, it's when your character says something about sensing something in the dark. Your pot sadly cannot protect you from her. If you want to look cooler, use light bulbs instead. So yeah, add them to the pot too. Now for the tricky part. Search for the main road within the caverns that links the biome together. Follow the direction closely and look for the ruined biome. The one with the brown colored ground. Once there, don't forget to gather some rocks and gold from stalagmites to make the clockmaker tool and a step back watch to make exploring easier. Also gr grind some flint in and add the power to the mix. Normally your belly will be dangerously low at that point, but it's okay, just remember that you're just slowly losing health when starving and not instantly dying, meaning you technically have extra time based on your current health. Yeah, also you can't really regen health by the watch when starving, so yeah, why not cool down, throw this shit into the pot and stir. If you find some sort of long road like that when in the brown biome, hooray, it may potentially be the blue mushroom biome. Oh yeah, something something about pot. Proceed to head for the mush lunar biome. It's always connected to the blue mush biome. Don't put blue mushroom into the pot. Wanda hates mushroom anyway. Don't forget to gather some bones scattered around the floor while you're at it. You're not a cannibal like Wally, so please don't throw them into the pot. Then, when you are the lunar biome, congratulations! Now you can't just sit there idly and wait. Yeah, that's the only big and risky RNG part of this plan. You have to wait for those fuckers to appear. So just walk around and look for the archives entrance while you are waiting for them. Oh, here's one. Come here, you little bitch. I'm gonna smash with my pot so freaking hard. Wait for you to come to a stop. Rush him. Hit it around eight times. And when the ball starts shaking, then either use the backstep watch or run for your life. You can also lit it on fire, though it looks cool and destroys balls pretty efficiently, but my god brings a water balloon just in case. 
Yep, and during the fight the water from the pot evaporated for some reason. Depending on your luck, you'll need one or two mushroom juice. Then when done, immediately make the watch and accept your fate. <laughs> Don't forget to die at the safe spot. Your only weakness is if you die at a risky spot when enemies can't just instantly destroy you upon revival. And now congrats, you can now throw this used spot into the void upon overcoming one of my human weakness, hunger. Great job! Now I'm gonna try to do the same IRL and see how it goes. Alright, see you in another video.